just it felt like the right place for me to be. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, so the Freedom Chatter was created by the ANC, which is the African National um, Congress. And they were the party. I mean, it was like a lot of different parties that were involved in the struggle against the apartheid government um, through the course of, of, of that whole struggle, including the PAC um, and a lot of other like political parties that grew from the ANC. Um, but the ANC took power in 1994 um, after the first democratic elections when Nelson Mandela became the president. And um, the ANC was pretty much the leader in, 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 in those efforts toward freedom. Um, it was created by, uh, by the leadership of the ANC in 1955 and this leadership um, collective included Ruth First. And Ruth First is um, among a few like incredible warrior women in South Africa who were like leading the fight against the apartheid. This includes um, who we refer dearly to as the mother of the nation, Winnie Madikizela Mandela. Um, it includes Lillian Ngoi, Albertina Sisulu, um, Helen Joseph, Helen Suzman, um, Fatima Mir. Am I forgetting anyone? I don't think so. And these were like like great great leaders who envisioned freedom um, that was even more so radical than um, what the leadership of the what the other leadership of the ANC envisioned and what they were able to make possible. Um, and the Freedom Charter was adopted during the Congress of the People in 1955. Um, when I was, so I was born in 92 and Nelson Mandela was out of prison in 91. And so everybody born from 94 in South Africa is called born, the born freeze because they're people born after the apartheid. Um, so I was born during that transitional period. And um, I don't know anyone in South Africa who doesn't know the freedom chatter in their heart, um, who doesn't know what it says and what that means, at least not like black people. Um, yeah, and I'm like, I'll share more um, kind of later on about what it means for us and what it's meant for my family. Um, yeah, but it was created as like a powerful and important part of that struggle against the, the apartheid. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna ask Ro has a question, <laughs> and then um, yeah, you're welcome. Like Robin said, to ask any questions in the chat or raise your hand if you have a comment or question. So Rojas, you are a part of the team that wrote um, the Young Women's Freedom Center and Sister Freedom um, Coalitions, um, Sister Warriors Freedom Coalitions Freedom Charter. What was that process like? Um, and I want to give context as well that like I like I I mean. I don't know what it's like to like think about a freedom chatter, um, but I imagine that process also involves like thinking about what freedom means, um, so that you're able to like you know like to define that in in the chatter that you set forth. So I'm really curious about what that process was like. All right. So I, yeah, you're right. I guess I'd have to uh, talk about freedom first, like what what that means. Um, and I'm gonna say that uh, I'm. Freedom, freedom is the right to be our full selves and not be judged, y'all. Like, we're, we're used to that, you know? Always being judged. Freedom is the right to speak without biting our tongues or holding back because of us being accustomed to being unheard. It's the right to think independently and consciously and outside the box, and that's what the center teaches us, right? Um, we basically have been called aggressive because of our cultural differences. We talk, we're in space with each other. We talk, we move our hands and like in other spaces out, outside of, you know, Sister Warriors and YWFC, we're, we're looked at as a, somehow dangerous or aggressive or, or the, you know, it's violent behavior. But like in our space, like in our process, we were able to jump up and talk like that and, and like hug each other, cry it out, um, you know, that that's like freedom for us, like not being judged and, and being able to do that, you know? And coming up with these like radical ideas that we were, any other space would be laughed at, you know? And it's like, hey, how are y'all gonna get there? They look at us and like, a lot of us didn't go to school and we're all system impacted. So we're outside of our own space have been looked at kind of as a joke until, until now, you know? 
to like that they see our power like our power in in numbers and yeah it's, it's exciting to be a part of this process and to have been a part of it from the very um beginning um in our freedom process uh we should name that it took a, a lot of dedication emotional labor healing traveling across california and folks came from out of state actually you know um, mobile, we, we come back to our communities, we mobilize, we, we bring back the information that we learned, you know, and we do the whole each one teach one thing and uh, they call each other afterwards, you know, after this process that that is, you know, something to be excited about y'all like, like, I, I love the process and what it took for us to get here, you know, it took a lot of relationship building and even like it took a lot of repairing old relationships. You know, we seen each other in space. We learned about the chords and we learned how to be in space with each other and come up with this, with, with these rights, you know, that, that, that this, that we're owed, you know, th these are our rights, y'all. So I don't know, sorry if I get excited, but um, I, I always get excited about the Freedom Charter. So, um, it's our guiding star. Anyhow, um, the process was unlike any other process I've been a part of. It was empowering to see cis and trans women, cis and trans girls, gender nonconforming and gender expansive folks come together and talk about what freedom meant to them. You know, uh, just hearing that we had these rights was was new to me. You know, we're, we're all used to be treating, treated like we have no rights at all. You know, we've all been that black sheep, that underdog, whatever names there are, you know, we, we've been that, y'all. And um, yeah, so that's kind of like what our, our process was like. I guess I could say a whole lot more, but um, about how empowering it was and even see like the way you named like all these women who did so much work on the Freedom Charter, like I want to say like Jessica Nellen, you know, Kriya, I want to name like Kriya, Ipashina, Amika, like who, sorry if I'm leaving folks out, y'all, there was so, so many more, but like I, I feel like that, that like 10 years down the line, by the time we get to Freedom 2030, we'll be talking like Tabila is talking right now. And yeah, that's all a part of our process, but anyhow, um, did I, did I answer that? Did I do good enough answering? It did. Yeah. You feel okay because if there's anything that you feel that I like I left unanswered, please let me know. Um, so, uh, in what ways did y'all use the Freedom Charter and how are you using it now? So, um, I definitely feel like um, I want to give like a context of kind of like you know what happened in South Africa that like before we were colonized by the Dutch. And like before the apartheid regime, we were colonized by the French at some point and then also colonized by the English at some point. And so we had like, like a, a long history of being colonized and that meant people being displaced um, in like, so like the infrastructure of our country is very apartheid, like, you know, rich white people get to live in the center of the cities and then black people, um, colored people all live in like the far ends of the city. Um, during the apartheid era, people were not allowed to go into the city if you didn't have a pass, which was like, we, they used to call it a dom pass. So you needed to have a pass to be able to go into the city and go into parts of the country. Um, you couldn't just go to the beach. <laughs> like, and this wasn't like a long time ago. This was like when my mother was alive. Um, like the apartheid ended a year before I was born. So this is definitely not old. Um, I lived in Cape Town before I moved here. And it was, it was such like a, a painful thing because the people who had been removed from their land during the apartheid were still alive. And so they would come into the city center and see where they used to live, where they no longer had access to live. Um, and their children would be able to say, this is my grandparents' land and have no access to it. Um, I, my mother is the first person in my family who was able to decide for herself what she wanted to do, who was able to decide to go to school, who had the opportunity to go to college, um, who like before, before, before the nineties, even like, 
like the late night, I mean, there the, the was like a black elite in Sophia town and black people um, who like in Tulsa, um, like had built themselves and had built things and had been able to organize themselves. And of course, it like, it, it, you know, there wasn't a genocide in Sophia town, but there definitely was like, um, it, like a systematized way to like oppress those people and make sure that that wealth was didn't like trickle down generations of, 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 of their children. Um, but I know that like so many black people in South Africa didn't have access to formal to formal banking to the formal economy. So you couldn't my grandparents didn't have bank accounts until the 90s until like, like, yeah, until the 90s, they didn't have bank accounts, you couldn't get a bank loan. Um, all of their houses were built by the apartheid government where like I grew up in Shopville, which is the township where in 1960 the Shopville massacre was. Um, and my great grandmother actually was shot in, during the Shopville massacre in protest. And so I feel like um, when I think about the Freedom Charter, I feel like all of us who were born during that transitional period, who were born free, um, know it as well as like our parents as well as our grandparents because for us the freedom charter didn't just mean um it wasn't just the statement of like the politicians who were leading the movement like we understood that the movement was us like we were going to take the power back we were going to take our country back we were going to make ourselves free and so um i think about the freedom charter as like a map to freedom as like a dream that we could all have um, I feel like when we say we are the ones that we've been waiting for our ancestors wildest dreams like my grandmother cannot believe the life that I have she can't believe that I get to decide for myself what I want to do and where I want to go um I am like the first person in my family to ever have like a place <laughs> to stay off my own the first person in my family to have a car um and those things seem like small things but they mean economic opportunity um, they mean the capacity to decide for yourself. Um, when I when I came out to my family and I was like, oh, I'm queer, like that was incredible. And they could understand that because of the Freedom Charter. Um, I live in like in a family of people who are hyper Christian. <laughs> and so sometimes they don't understand a lot of our identities, but what they understand is freedom and why it's important for everybody to choose for themselves. Um, South Africa is called is regarded as one of the countries with the most um, progressive, if that's the word, constitution. And that is because of the Freedom Charter. That is because the people who were fighting for freedom understood that it had to include everyone. Um, we were one of the earliest countries to have a civil act, um, like civil act rights that allowed people who were queer to marry each other, um, that allowed people to like affirm their gender and transition. Um, and so I feel like all of those things are because of the Freedom Charter, because the people innately believe that they have the right to move around. And I think that this is so important because beforehand, like it would have been, it was like a foreign thing to think about. If you have been oppressed, you live your whole life cleaning up after people who let you come to their, to, to their, to their city and let you take care of their children, who abuse you and hurt you and tell you you can't move in your own country, you can't get money, you can't do this and you can't speak this language and you have to speak that language. Like the idea that you can be free, that you can have children that choose where to go to school, that choose what to do with their bodies is like just unthinkable, it's an unimaginable thing. Um, my grandmother talks about this like when, when she talks to me about like the things that I have been able to decide for myself, it's like such an emotional thing for her because she's like, I remember living in the apartheid and thinking we would never see the day, just like hoping for freedom, but not thinking it was going to happen in our time. And so I feel like, I feel like um, more than anything, the Freedom Charter allowed people to recognize their own rights. The people of South Africa were like, oh, like I have the right to govern. I have the right to share in the wealth of the country. I have the right to the land of the country. I have the right to like peace and friendship. That is a part of the Freedom Charter. Um, I have the right to healing. I have the right to like decide for myself what my religion is, to decide where I want to go, to just to have economic opportunity, um, which are things that were not when you were not allowed to think that during the apartheid, the apartheid regime. It was like very oppressive, oppressed the way that people thought about themselves, thought about what they could do, what they could dream, what they could imagine. And the Freedom Charter was a different way. It was like an imagination of something else that 
mm, actually you have the right to this as well. Uh, and so I feel like that's what it did. I think that even after the after the like I feel like during the apartheid era it was used as like a, a, a manifesto as a way to like mobilize like the freedom charter created like freedom fighters of all South Africans that's what it did is because you read it you heard it and you were like okay I'm trying to do this like I'm trying to do this for my family I'm trying to do this for myself and you understood that you were the person that you were the one to do that um yeah I feel like the Freedom Charter also is collectivist. Um, South Africans are like very community oriented or at least try to be, um, it like reflects Ubuntu, which means humanity. And in knowing that like one is not free if others are not free um, and that freedom is, inter is intersectional. Everybody has to be brought along in order for it to be meaningful. Um, yeah, I feel like that's what it meant. It meant we could dream, we could have a dream. And it wasn't just one person's dream. It was all of our dream. It was all of our dream and all of us could make it happen. Oh, Tafile, you know, as you're talking, I'm like making these connections in my head. Like when you said like folks weren't allowed to even you know, walk in certain areas or neighborhoods or whatever, like y'all made the connections. Like when we're in nicer areas and folks are asking us if we're lost or like the police, you know what I mean? Like, like you can feel that a little like where we're at you turn on we turn on the news and we see that a black man was jogging and was killed or when we pay attention to say her name like these things are happening like now here where we're at and, and like the freedom charter y'all that's our guide like that's how we're gonna get there but um and I love, yeah, to be saying it took everyone like it is literally going to take all of us you know, as many folks as we can mobilize and like invite to come along and join this fight with us, you know, like do it. It's Freedom 2030, we got, well, how many more years we got? <laughs> Anyhow, go ahead, uh, you can ask me the next question. To play out. Thank you, yeah, I feel like um, I want to understand why um, like the Freedom Chatter was written in like, and whether or not it was like thought about as like a, like something to support the, the goal of Freedom 2030. Um, like why was it specifically written? I, I think like Freedom, the Freedom Charter was written like, because we already know, we already knew that our hoods like have are never ever been free. Um, we've always had systems in place to keep our communities oppressed. And, but what we didn't know, what we like, well, I myself didn't know, I don't, and I, a lot of folks that I've talked to, like what, what we didn't know is that we had these rights that we name in our freedom charter. Like, it, it, that was just our life, you know, like the, the way things are in our neighborhoods, like that, that's just life for us, you know, like we're just used to living, you know, used to getting our houses raided, police coming in any hours of the night, like that, that was normal, I guess. You know, um, our families being separated and it being hard to get your siblings back because you don't have the extra rooms that ch children's services want you to have, you know, we get punished for being poor. So, you know, we didn't, it's a trip. Like we, even for like myself thinking like we have like the right to be free from sexual and gender based uh, violence by our communities and institutions, like, damn if I would have known you know what I mean it's like I, I've been incarcerated and I've been sexually assaulted and it didn't feel like I had that right but when I'm standing with all of my sisters and siblings like I know I got that right you know and we know folks are going to listen because it's it's not just me that it's happened to and we all have a story to share. So, you know, just knowing like that we have the right to be treated like with dignity, regardless of our legal immigration or our, our past or our, our history of arrest. Like I, I think it was written so that we, we would have, be able to name it, you know? Like it feels good to say that I, ha I have the right to be treated with dignity. You know, it feels good to show up with sister warriors. It feels feels, you know, we're used to, I, I myself is used to feeling like um, 
alone, you know, but I don't feel like that anymore. It is it's written to be our like guidance, our North Star, our, our, our roadmap to freedom so that we can have these rights to like education and knowledge of technology while we're incarcerated and not get out and feel like you're going crazy because you have no idea what Wi-Fi is. Like literally I felt like I was going crazy. Like I don't plug anything in anywhere. You know, like that that's what these systems do to us and that's what they're meant to do. So yeah, that's what I've been. Is that good? Yeah. Did I answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, thank you, Sabile. So, uh, what what did the Freedom Charter inspire? Is my okay. next question. Oh, yeah. I feel like so. I, like, I, I definitely feel like it inspired like all South Africans to dream and to like know that like we could imagine something different and that we had the right to think about something different. I feel like you move differently when you know that it is your right to be free. Like it's not a, you're not asking the apartheid government to make you a little favor it's like it is your fundamental human right to be free and so the way that we were, we were no longer asking for it like it inspired people to fight like post um 1955 it was no longer like chill times in the struggle we were no longer doing that anymore um the, like there were the, the riots in Shafville in Soweto, like youth were, were fighting, women were fighting, everybody was organizing themselves across the entire country because people were no longer, like we, we were not playing anymore. We were coming for our land, we were coming for our resources, um, we were trying to govern our own selves and make decisions for ourselves. Um, and so I feel like it, it, it inspired people in this like big way to feel like they were the ones who had to fight for the freedom. Um, I grew up in like, I don't know how to like, <laughs> I feel like when I think about what it's like to like grow up as a, as a black person in South Africa, I feel like I got kicked out of my church when I was 19 because I was like, mm, y'all doing things that are wrong. <laughs> and I felt like I had the right to be like, this is wrong though. I always felt in whatever space I was in, whenever something was like unjust and unfair, I was always able to say, this is wrong. Because I because I grew up in this country where like we fought for the things that we wanted. Um, a couple of years ago, we were protesting, the police were shooting at us. And it was fine because we were fighting for free education. And now in South Africa, poor people get to go to college for free because we knew that we could fight for it. We knew it was all right. And then we did that. Um, whenever there's like, like South Africans are people who fight for what they need to get. It's just like, that is just the culture of the people in South Africa. If something is not right, like we are like in, in, like in the way that even our constitution is written for like labor rights, um, for like, like just rights for different for different people. Like we know what our rights are. And because of that, we fight for our rights. Um, so I feel like that's what it inspired. I think it is like a living, like active manifesto for all of us that we remember. It's like when I think about ever like having, like this is what I teach my little sister. Like when my little sister was looking for a school, um, for like high school a couple of years ago, I called all these schools and I was like, well, how many black teachers do you have? And what is your hair policy? And what are you doing in this space? And what are you doing in this space? Because I knew that my sister had the right to be in a school with people like herself, to be able to wear her hair, to be able to be proud of who she was. And I feel like, I mean, there was like, this like really beautiful movement around hair and like, and the freedom to wear our hair in South Africa, which was led by like an 11 year old girl. It was like all over the news, all over the country, people were fighting about it. And it was led by an 11 year old black girl who was like, actually, I like my Afro just as it is. And so I feel like that's what it meant. It meant that like people knew that they could fight for whatever they wanted and that they had the right in the country to share in whatever was there because it's for all of us. Um, yeah, I feel like it is, it is our pride. I feel like it reminds us of like a really like tough history that still lives um but it also from the freedom charter also means that like and from the people who fought against the apartheid it also means that we have people like beverly dizzy and steve lizzie simon Nkoli who fought for the rights of queer people in south africa um people who fought who fought through like the hiv pandemic for people to have resources people who are still fighting right now for like sex worker rights like we're <laughs> yeah i don't know how to say this other than like we're a country of people who know 
when when we're done talking and <laughs> we're ready to go into the streets um yeah I feel like that's what it's, it, it inspired um and I feel like you know like the apartheid was like it ended in 1991 so it wasn't so long ago I also know that there are people who because of the apartheid like my mother is a very passive person because she knows what it's like to not be able to say oh I don't like this and what it's like to live in 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 a society where it's very punitive for you to be dissatisfied with anything and so as much as there were people who understood the freedom shutter and were able to like move in that space of power and recognizing the power in numbers the power in like having one vision but also other like people have not healed from the apartheid um and so i feel like the young people in south africa also have this like big job to like we're like okay like i mean we say this as a joke all the time but whenever you go into a space and like something like racist happens i'm like winnie mandela didn't die for this i'm sorry i'm coming in and you're going to serve me because Mandela wasn't in prison for 27 years so that you could treat me like this. Um, and that's and we know that about ourselves. So I feel like that's something that I'm really um, that I'm really proud of. Um, I'm proud that like and when, whenever I'm like um, whenever I don't, I'm afraid to like advocate for myself or to say this is uncool with me or I want this or I need this. I think about that. I think about all of those people who fought so hard for us to be able to even think that we could make decisions for ourselves. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to decide for myself. Um, I think about how my grandmother at like, my great grandmother at like 90 held me in, in her hand and we, it was like Freedom Day, which is like the 21st of March. Um, I still remember this. I don't remember a lot of things from my childhood, but I remember this, like she held me in her hand and we were like walking up a hill because Nelson Mandela was in, in our township in Shopville and we were gonna meet him. And Nelson Mandela came and held my grandmother's hand so that she could like get up a hill because she was struggling to walk. And like she, after that, after that, interaction she was saying that like you know like this is what we fought for not so that like other black people can come and take the power from the people but that the people could have their power back and when Nelson Mandela says if the ANC does to you what the apartheid government did to you you know what to do with them like we we heard that we hear that and when the ANC like is corrupt and does what the apartheid government did we know what to do because we've already learned what to do um, yeah, I feel like that is the long winded way to say that it inspired us to like want to be free. Um, and, and like, and I really want to say that, like, that I am free and that that means so much to me because it means that like, it means, um, that my sister doesn't have to have the same kind of life that my mother did, like none of us do. Um, and it means that like my sister has so much support. There are like so many like <laughs> black children in South Africa ready to like march at my sister's school and be like, no, see, this is not cool. There are so many people ready to have her back um, because we know that we can do that. Um, and I feel like when I was reading the Freedom Chatter, when I was reading our Freedom Chatter for um, the Women's Freedom Center and Sister, Fre um, sister Warriors Freedom Coalition, I was like, I want this world. You know, like I want this world. I want this world where we're not criminalized and like cis and trans women are not like incarcerated. I want this world that is not punitive, where we're not punished for the things that we are like for our own oppression and we're not punished for trauma and we're not punished for not having access to resources. I want a world where we can be free and decide for ourselves. Um, yeah, yeah. I have another question um, for you, Rojas. Well, Bilet, can I just say, when you speak, it's so empowering in knowing that we, y'all, we have the opportunity, like we have our freedom charter, we, 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 we can do this too and speak about like our freedom charter, the way Jamila is speaking of the South African freedom charter, like I, I told you that I read about the South African Freedom Charter and the apartheid in Nelson Mandela when I was in the hole. I was there for two years and it was, um, they had me back there for uh, being under investigation, right? They had like kicked me out of my college course. So like that, again, I didn't have the right to education. And um, 
and being here with you like now and working for the center and, and, and listening to you, like, it's just an honor and like it, empowering and inspiring. And like, I just hearing the struggles of, of your family and like back home, like your grandmother, like just, like if y'all can do it, like, damn, I feel like we can do like just like hearing you firsthand like in 1992 being born free like in 94 what like damn i just had to pause for a minute and think of that because i really know you know we all know what it's like to not be free but damn to hear you and and see how far you came like just yeah just i'm glad you're with us um, you're here at the center and yeah now Thank we're pushing you. our Freedom Charter and it, it's an honor to be pushing it with you. Thank you, Rojas. I'm so grateful, yeah. It kind of feels like it, I don't know how to even like make sense of it. I was just like, I can't believe this is true also, that there's this other Freedom Charter to think about and to like, yeah, I think it's like, it definitely feels like, like I was saying, like just like this like loop of like that healing work I've been trying to do for myself. like. What does it mean to be free and like what does it mean to be well and what does it mean to be healed um and to be able to like decide for myself where does that where does that like go um what were they fighting for i think about that a lot I think about i went to like winnie mandela's um 80th birthday which was like a few years before she died and i mean you know like the stuff that happened with Winnie after after the apartheid um, and like the way that power is still taken from like black women even after they've lost so many of their years fighting for everyone else to be free um, and she, like Winnie was like 80 years old and she was like she was like talking about the the previous pre president of South Africa and she was like we want our land back and she was calling people out and she was 80 and I was like I want to live my life forever knowing that it is my right to be free I want to live like that um yeah I have I want to ask you um Rojas just what the what I mean, I think you talked about this a little bit um, in responding to why the Freedom Charter was written and um, with this like idea that like we now we have this like map of what it looks like when we're free, what we, we know what we want and we know what it means in terms of like rights. Um, what does the Freedom Charter mean um, for Freedom 2030 and how we get there? What does the Freedom Charter mean for the Young Women's Freedom Center? And what does it mean for um, Sister Warriors Freedom Coalition? Well, uh, we keep saying it's, it's our North Star, you know, it, it, it's, it is to guide our movement and uh, mass incarceration and criminalization of brown and black, black and brown folks. And it is like, it's it's what we y'all. It's like when we want to know what what policies we we want change. What like I can't say it enough that it's our roadmap. Like how to get there. What we should be fighting for. Like you know when we're all voting now. You know what I mean. We've fought for voting rights, and, and th this is how we know. Like across the board, what our whole um. Our, our every chapter across California will be fighting for. You know, we if, if we don't have a time to jump on the phone, like we know by looking at the Freedom Charter, if it makes sense to vote yes or no, you know, it may, it may, it's like for policy, it's for everything. It's, it's campaigns that we're joining, campaigns that we are pushing ourselves, you know, campaigns we're creating, so, and leading. And I asked to follow me the freedom, freedom charter, y'all. Yeah? And it's like, it's our light in the dark, you know, when it feels like it's, it's too much, you know, it's, we, we just go straight back to the freedom charter. That's, and for freedom 2030, I think it's like, we will have created a timeline and be able to like look back and see everything we've accomplished, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I could talk about, I know you don't know about what um, it's supposed to uh, teach us, if you want me to go there, to relay. 
I mean, wherever you want to go. Oh, okay, okay. Like, um, it, it teaches us that, first of all, it teaches us that prison policing and family separation systems are rooted in the histories of colonization of indigenous people, slavery, and Jim Crow laws, and continue to reflect racial apartheid um, in the United States, y'all, when I was making it, when I was listening to Tabula talk, and I'm like, damn, I can make connections here, and I'm sure all, every single one of you can, you know, especially Black folks, like, y'all, like, when I, I know, because the folks I was naming on the news who I said folks running, drug and getting shot, like, that is who I was talking about, you know, we, I, I was speaking of um, Black folks that, that this is happening to, you know, on a daily, you know, so um, yeah, that is our, that it does reflect the racial apartheid in the United States. You know, now now is the time, you know, this that's why there's all these uprisings. And again, I, I just I just feel lucky to be at the center and to be in this fight and to be a part of um, this whole process. Um, uh, it, it also teaches us just, I, I just have to say, it also teaches us, you know, that we, we're the, we are the ones that should be at the table, you know, we're the best, um, we're, we're best positioned to identify like alternatives to incarceration and family separation, what it is, that, whatever it is that they want to do with us when we get arrested or when they come check our homes, we don't have enough rooms for our kids and they want to separate, you know, I got folks that are going through that right now, you know, that don't, just because they don't have two bedrooms, they can't have their three kids, you know, and, and it's like, damn, but that's why we have the Freedom Charter, right, you know, to mobilize our folks, to organize, to let folks know then that, that we have these rights, and, and like, and being, like, us being inspired by the South African Freedom Charter and having Tabila here speaking about what it was like over there and being the first person to own a car in the family. I know, um, shit, I don't, that's, that's crazy. I know here we, I'm like the third, generationally I'm like, we're the third generation that's been incarcerated, incarcerated, my nephew and my niece, they're like fourth generation, like we can say, like, we can compare like in different ways, you know, because of like how many people in our communities have been incarcerated and, and the rate that women and trans and gender nonconforming, gender expensive folks are being incarcerated right now, you know, um, so. Yeah, just 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 trying to compare, make the you know, not not compare because it doesn't compare. That's not the right word, y'all. That's not the right word, um, because I would I would I would I can't compare to that struggle. But I'm trying to think of the right word to be like. To help me. I hear it though. I hear it. Yeah, I hear that connection. Yeah, I'm those connections for sure. That's what I'm saying. I was trying to think of another word, but yeah, it's a lot. Very emotional. Um, you know that as we were talking about this. Yeah. Just hearing your story, like I was in tears. And that's another thing about our space. Is, you know, shout out to Juju. I forgot to say Juju as an OG earlier, like has been in space with all of us and pulled, I know has pulled me aside, like you're right, fam. You know, that that's something else we need is, you know, throughout this process is to see each other to also support each other when we're being uh, re when we're being triggered or re-traumatized as we're sharing our stories, so we can hone in on, you know, what the barriers are and and how we could cross them, you know, and get our people across. <laughs> Thank you, Rojas. I actually was thinking this, like, I, like, I, I was talking about this with um with you and with Kriya and and Robin as well that like because I know I know what it's like for people to like not believe that the thing they want is possible when the world keeps saying no you're not allowed to do this and no you're not allowed to think about yourself this way and you're not allowed to dream about this but it would be so great if like people in this in this um 
in this conversation, everybody in this call, if you can just like in the chat, like asking yourself, like, do you believe that what we want in like for ourselves to be free, that our freedom 2030 goal is achievable? Like, do you believe that? Do you believe that that's something that you deserve? Do you believe that that's something we're going to make happen? Um, and thinking about how to like continue reminding yourself that you believe it, continue reminding yourself that like we are the ones that are going to make it happen. Um, we are the ones that we've been waiting for to make it happen. Um, yeah, I feel like th just that like that th that thinking about ourselves and owning this dream um, it was like so important in like being active and activated and doing that work. Um, and then I have, I think you already answered this, Rojas. You answered what the Freedom Chatter is supposed to teach us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of did answer that one already. It, um, do you want me to go keep going? <laughs> No, I mean, you answered it. And like, we can also read, like, we can read messages from the chat as well, um, from other folks. Like, um, Marcel absolutely believes it. Hell yeah, um, says Tumani. Hell yes, Brooke. Um, Raylene says, oh, hell yeah. Um, um, Selena says, yes, 100%. Tori, yes, with the red heart. <laughs> Absolutely, says Dexy. Um, Rashida says, yes. Jessica says, yes, with multiple S's. <laughs> um, 100 says, Mel, yes. Says um, Morgan. Abigail says, yes. Luda says, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. <laughs> Carly says, yes, yes, yes. Um, Kriya says, absolutely deeply. When I was a kid, I never thought we'd be having conversations about how best to shut down youth detention facilities. I feel that. Uh, Angelique says, well deserved. And as the North Star, as our compass, um, have all the faith in the world. Um, Eddie says, 100. Um, with like both hands up to the sun. <laughs> I don't even know what that emoji means. Um, Brooke likes your t-shirt, Rojas. Yeah. Um, Brooke, we're gonna have to go, you know? Yes, fam, I love your t-shirt. <laughs> um, Desiree said, yes, I strongly believe that through um, modeled hope, we are working toward freedom for us and for generations to come. Mel says, I know. Um, yeah, I feel like, yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody want, has like wants to make a comment or like ask a question. Y'all, do you like after like being here with us? Like I, I know we weren't able to be in space with each other, and I know it's not like our Freedom Academy or like um, you know, like when we were in the process of creating the Freedom Charter, writing the Freedom Charter. Like, do y'all feel like? anything out of this like damn yeah I, I i do want to push towards freedom 2030 like yes we do need to be discussing this more at our sites y'all like like i'm telling you i have mine laminated like i i have my freedom charter i look to it all the time like when when folks are like hey do you do y'all want to call sponsor this bill i i don't know before i even call I me mean, our policy director i'm, I'm reading the freedom charter y'all like I, it does something once you start to do that every I know the LA team um has been it's been part of our check-ins every team meeting it's been a part of our check-ins which which article resonates with us and 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 it changes because different shit is going on in our lives you know maybe maybe uh one day it, it's about for our gender and sexuality to be respected because folks are not using our correct pronouns and, and and then the next day it's like about our uh making our own uh, medical care decisions you know like so it changes weekly what which article resonates with us and that's it's, yeah it's how we have it in our heads how we remember it's how we keep pushing the freedom chart we're actually like our, our team's bringing it up in meetings now like hey what are we doing about this or what are we doing about freedom chart yeah it's part of our conversation. So just wondering if that ha is going, if anybody else feels the same, or if y'all want to like meet with us and talk about the Freedom Charter and if, 
if still after after this session you're not feeling like you're understanding it too much and and you want to like meet like let's do that y'all Let, let's start you know circling up and having these meetings about our freedom charter i'm so inspired to be lit so i'm like pumped right now <laughs> but you and everything you said i'm just like ready Thank you, Rojas, me too. Um, yeah, and I really want to participate in, in the way, I've heard a lot about like the way um, you all have been talking about the Freedom Charter and what it means. Um, yeah, and I want to like, I'm really interested in, in, in being able to like, to know at a, like a deep fundamental level how to believe that in myself all the time, every day, um, and like move in the world just like fully, fully knowing that about myself um, and have and knowing that I have this freedom um, and that I can ask these things of the world I think is, is such a powerful thing um, yes um, Julia you're allowed to comment please um, I just wanted to say um, having to like navigate all these different systems and the first week that I came to the Young Women's Freedom Center as a staff here, I remember Latifah called and she said, you're going to go to uh, the United Nations to New York, right? And I was like, okay, like, you know, like, I'm just, I felt like I just got plucked up out the hood, y'all. Like, I was like, all over the place. I had just done all these little internships. I was like, barely just, barely not hustling, you know? And it was like, I had a different opportunity. And when I was sitting there and I was with all these folks that were talking about all of these issues that folks were impacting like globally. And I started really just realizing that, dang, it's, um, it's all connected. All of this is connected. And we just had a meeting today with this uh, organization. And I'm so humbled that, you know, I said, you know, we modeled it after the South African Freedom Charter and they've been doing this global rights work. And they were like, what? They like, they heck were like, wait, wait a second. I got to take a look at this. And so we broke it down to them inside of the space, but I just feel extremely like privileged and honored to, y'all I'm on my moon, so this is heavy. <laughs> but anyways, like, I just feel like really humbled to be with y'all. And I'm like, well, this, this, this is for real right here. Like this ain't no just, you know, oh, we're coming to like, just help or whatever. Like we're coming to like, get it. Like we're about to really shake things up and like, transform some stuff and yeah I just acknowledging the shoulders that we stand on even just being able to mention that that this is modeled after the South African Freedom Charter. Yes um thank you Julia I love that I love that you said that but like yeah like we're, we're not asking anymore that was like that's not now anymore um thank you for that. Can I, can I add one thing? Uh, Ross and, <clears throat> sorry, uh, Tavile, thank you both so much um, for today and everybody. And um, if you don't have the Freedom Charter, it is on the drive, but you know, we struggle with that sometimes. But um, I want to make sure everybody has it because one thing that really stood out to me, actually everything you, you said, Tavile, I, I was so grateful to, to be here today. But um that this is like a living document. It's 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 not even a document, right? It's like a living um, thing, and and we all get so busy in the day to day work. But it's like, you know, I have them all over my house on the wall. Like I I took a lot of posters from the event, but it is like, it, yeah, when you come down my stairs, like my kids, my family, like it is. It's beyond Freedom Twenty Thirty, and it took us damn near three and a half years to write it and like I, I say roughly 400 people because it's like it's the the that deep everything that folks have been thinking about and what does freedom really look like what would it really feel like what would liberation really feel like and, and it's so clear and so it really just becomes that roadmap so um I just want to make sure everybody has access to it and that Part of our work is to share it too um, with everyone, right? Because like Tabili said, that world, like 
wanting to live that, like that is what we want for for everyone. That's what the call is, right? So um anyways, actually I'll resend it out today right now. Jess, I think we need shirts with like the freedom charter on it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be dope. Yes. Like a long ass shirt. But mm -hmm. we <laughs> Well, like, maybe just the articles, like certain articles yeah. for a different well, like a concert tour shirt, like on the back. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. on the back, you know, like I went to Freedom to 2030. Yeah. For real. So when we were talking about um, doing this type of learning exchange, we the word um, tradition came up. You know that we want this is the one year anniversary of launching freedom 2030 and that we have a, we want a culture and a tradition of celebrating this this document this living document this breathing document um and so i hope that we'll continue and y'all will share ideas about other sessions like this that we can do and um and other other, yeah, I think we should definitely do the t-shirts. <laughs> we should definitely do the t-shirts. That'd be long sleeve, going down both sleeves, all the back, the front. And um, I want to get my, I'm going to find a lamination machine, Rojas, to get my laminated, my Freedom Charter. Oh, I just did it with clear tape. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's that hood, hood laminate, hood laminating right there. Yeah, it works, it's fine. But, um, <laughs> Anybody else who was there in there when it happened, who was a part of writing the charter, want to want to add? Um, we only have a couple more minutes, or people There's can. A question, I think. To... I, I think Selena had her hand up. There was a question. My bad. Selena oh no, um, I don't have a question, and I wasn't part of writing the Freedom Charter, but I do want to express my gratitude to Tabila, and um, because I am extremely honored, like to hear and um, the story behind, you know, um, just even with Nelson Mandela, like, you know, her holding her grandmother's hand and Nelson Mandela reaching out to her grandmother, like that's, that's strong. I don't, I've never, I've never talked to anyone who can tell me something that can like really like hit me and like where I can be like, wow, like that's dope, you know? And, um, and just uh, watching her speak and seeing the, the joy in her eyes of how free she feels and how, you know, just how happy she is. It just made me like realize like how um, ungrateful I am because I, you know, I could be free, but I hold myself back from being free, you know, and um, just she's, the, everything that, that was said right now, everything that was, that was you know, that, that was said from her was very powerful. And thank you to for sharing everything that you shared with us. Um, I'm very privileged to be in this space and, um, yeah, just wanted to express my gratitude. Thank you. Selena, just real quick. I wanted to say, uh, Tabila uses they, them pronouns. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't see it on there. It's all good. We know you didn't mean it. Uh, oh, also, thank you. Yeah. Selena, when I said make connections, I want you to think about like when, when they had a, a gun to... Ama's head, you know, our, our grandmother's head for uh, was going to shoot her, you know, just like har harassing. There, there was no no reason for that, you know, but they do that in Compton because we're people of color and, and that's what happens. We don't get that. We don't have those rights. We don't come from these nice communities with all these resources where cops don't come to your grandma's house. You know, our community, the cops come and point a gun at your grandma's head. So just like yeah. make those connections because make no, those and honestly, Rojas, that's Rojas. That's where I got connected because I mean, if you notice that, that's where I where where she was holding her. I mean, sorry, uh, where Tamila was holding um, Grandma's hand, you know, and that or it made me think of everything that, man, my grandma endured, you know, and the powerful woman that my grandmother was, our grandmother was, you know, like, and the the violence is not going to stop, but we can stop it. You know what I mean? Like we have a voice. All we need to do is empower other people, empower other women to stand up and and voice it and and know and let it be known that we won't stand down. You know yeah. what I mean? Like because so many people fear 
death and so many people fear the the blue you know uh, the police and all that for what we at least we can help our next generation so we got power numbers. We got, we're powerful too we're powerful too uh, we got power in numbers people power people power um thank you thank you so much rojas um for yeah for sharing with us um and i'm so grateful to like y'all don't even know like i tell the people in my country i send newsletters all the way to south africa all the time <laughs> because i want them to know um i want them to know i tell them all the time about the Animal women's freedom center the work that we do um I tell all my friends all the time, and I am like so, so proud to be a part of this team, um, to be like under the leadership in the support of the leadership of all of you doing such amazing work, um, which is so powerful. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, um, Robin, for setting this up and Eddie for supporting. Um, thank you for everybody who, who um, of course, like is, is doing the work all the time um, and wrote the, the Freedom Chatter and is thinking about it and working on it and working toward um, Freedom 2030 and beyond. Yeah. Um, I feel like we should close with singing this Stevie Wonder version of Happy Birthday to you to Freedom 2030, but <laughs> Does anybody H want him, to not saying. <laughs> Good birthday. We need Let's do it. I feel like next year and the year after and the year after we should like have cake at the at the sites to celebrate. We need to have cake. I'm down with cake. Do we lay? I'm always down for some cake. Cake season. <laughs> So who's gonna need this song? Don't make me do it, y'all. My voice ain't all that. It don't matter. All you gotta do is set it off. Okay, let's, should we count? Like one, two, three. So it's not- I'm just trying to get the background music going. Never mind. <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy 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 birthday to <laughs> hey, so I just want to say um, that I'm really, it's so awesome that people are saying they want to do more of these kinds of sessions. So I just put one last link in the chat. The Women's Charter for Effective Equality was written in about 95. And um, I just put a link to it. So it will blow your mind. And um, uh a, a supporter and ally of the centers that Jessica is in touch with, two of her mentors, she has a mentor who helped write that charter that we've been emailing back and forth with. And uh, South Africa is like nine hours, 10 hours time difference, but we're gonna try to do a session like this with um, her, her name is Pregs. And so if you are interested in being the, the Rojas to Tabile in that conversation, with Pregs, um, uh, I guess, let me know. I guess I'll be doing the coordinating of that. Um, and another, it'd be great to do something like this once monthly and um, and also around South African Freedom Day. To be like, you just said it was March 21st. I also, I also have it down as like April 27th. Yeah, but... so that's Freedom Day. March okay. 21st is Human Rights Day. Okay. Okay, so, um, but definitely, um, or it's the Women's Charter for Effective Equality. And it, it's, I can't describe it. I don't know. To be like, can you describe it at all? It's it effective. Does. Like, it's effective. Like, it is moving, active, like, working. Um, and it is written by women. 
And it's just saying that like that no, none of the rights in the country are going to be realized unless they're realized for women yeah. at the center. And um, and it's it's actually much longer than the other charter. And it just yeah, look at it. Um all right, does anybody want to close us out? Rojas, do you want to close us out? No, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Yeah, that, that was, I, I hope everybody leaves this meeting, this session with something to think about, really, and take to your um, team meetings at whatever site you are, you know? And if you're, uh, we're statewide, shit, take it wherever you go, y'all. Meeting 2030. Let's do it. All right. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, everybody. Have a good day.